G'day, push notifications. Have you ever sat back and thought about all those notifications that you receive, where they originate from, who sends them and where from? In this particular Oracle Mobile Cloud Service episode, we're going to look at the different mechanisms for raising push notifications, including the advanced options MCS provides so you can tailor fit your push notifications to a certain audience or even schedule future notifications as well. Thanks for joining me. I'm Chris Muir from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. MCS allows push notifications to be raised in three different ways. Firstly, MCS provides a user interface for easily raising and scheduling manual push notifications to chosen users or to consumers of a specific mobile backend. Secondly, from within some custom API code within MCS, you might decide you need to send a notification based on some event or action or processing. In this example, you can call the notification API directly from within your custom API code running inside MCS. Third, there is an example where you need to support customers where their on-premise enterprise systems also want to raise push notifications, but they don't have the capabilities to do this. In this case, MCS has an externalized REST API for calling notifications, and so this third party can make a REST call to the MCS REST API, and MCS will send out the push notification on their behalf. In this specific episode though, we're going to look at the MCS user interface mechanism and the REST API approach so you learn the various features. We'll defer the custom API approach to the later episodes when we cover the custom APIs in detail. To send push notifications manually via the MCS user interface, you access the send page via your mobile backend and click on the notifications left menu option. The first time you access this page, you'll see a page containing four icons providing steps on how to learn to set up push notifications. And in the bottom right of this page is a checkbox to turn this page off and go straight to the send page, which we'll go to right now. Let's take a quick walkthrough of this screen. Now the first field is the message field, and this is obviously where we type in the message that we're going to send out. Note, as you type the message in, the text box indicates to you how many characters you have remaining. From here underneath, you can schedule the message to be sent immediately or schedule it for later. In terms of who you send the message to, it can either be for all mobile clients running your application, or you can further refine these by selecting the filtered set of recipients radio button. On selecting this option, you can define one or more criteria by clicking on the plus and minus buttons, where the criteria are based on one or more device IDs, a specific platform such as Android or iOS, or finally, a specific user. Between these options and the broader all push enable clients of this mobile backend option, you have the ability to send out messages from a very fine to a large granular level depending on your business need. And having set all these options from here, then we select the magic send button, which of course does all the magic of sending the messages out to the devices, but via Apple's and Google's push services on your behalf. In terms of notifications scheduled for the future, the history schedule options on the right let you see what you've stacked on the queue, and you can delete these if you change your mind. If you switch to the sent option, you can see what was actually sent or failed to send. Finally, the check for updates button allows you to refresh the scheduled and sent list so you can see what is actually happening, what messages have been sent, what their statuses are. Beyond raising manual notifications via the MCS user interface, an external system can also raise push notifications via MCS by calling the external REST APIs via the following endpoints. Get mobile system notification notifications, post mobile system notifications notifications, get mobile system notifications notifications ID, and delete mobile system notifications notifications ID. The first get call to mobile system notifications notifications allows you to retrieve a list of all notifications sent and received for a specified mobile backend. You can filter the result by adding a status query parameter that allows you to filter by a status of new, scheduled, sending, error, warning, or sent. This is of course best demonstrated by the following curl call. In the curl call, we can see us passing in the Oracle mobile backend ID, accepting back a payload of JSON, and in the request we're getting from the mobile system notification notifications URL with the query parameter of status equals schedule. Finally, notice the username and password that we're passing in. 
Now from this request, we then hopefully will receive the following response. In the response payload, besides the individual messages, notice the notification ID of number one that will become useful in a moment. Also note for the push notification REST APIs that they are a little unusual compared to other MCS externalized REST APIs in that they cannot be called by an MCS mobile user. Rather, they can only be executed by an MCS user interface team member user with the mobile notifications administration role. This restriction exists to stop malicious mobile developers reverse engineering your app source code, stealing the mobile user name and required push notification identifiers, then maliciously spamming the MCS push notification service. Moving on to raise a notification via the REST API, you use the second post call to the same URL, which is again best demonstrated by the following curl call. While the curl call here is pretty much the same as we saw earlier on, notice the payload via the minus D option. And this shows you how to pass in the message a JSON construct with an attribute message followed by the string message to send. Be careful to observe the quotes in this example. You need to use single quotes around the payload and double quotes for the elements in the JSON payload. Otherwise, MCS will reject this. Next, if you wish to filter who gets the message, then you extend the JSON payload. For example, to filter the payload by a set of users by their email addresses, you would use the following payload with the user's attribute and an array of email addresses. Alternatively, to filter notifications by platform such as iOS, you could use the following payload with the additional attribute platform and then iOS. Another example of a payload where you can filter who gets the message is using notification tokens or more specifically an array of device IDs. And finally, if you want to schedule a notification for the future, you can use the send on element in your JSON payload like this example. Once you've submitted a number of notifications, given you remember the ID of the notifications raised, the third get endpoint mobile system notifications notifications ID allows you to retrieve the status of the specific notification. Now this is pretty self-explanatory at this point, so we'll just let you go and explore this yourself. Finally, if you have a scheduled notification for the future, the fourth endpoint delete mobile system notifications notifications ID Given the ID, we'll delete that notification from the pending notifications queue. There are some additional operational points about the MCS push notifications that you must understand when sending notifications. Firstly, when using the send notifications page, note in the very top right part of the window, the MCS environment, here showing development. When you send out a push notification, it is limited to the devices registered with the specific mobile backend and environment, that being either development, staging or production. In other words, when a device registers for push notifications, it registers to a specific mobile backend instance with a specific mobile backend ID, where the mobile backend ID equates to a specific environment such as development, staging or production. Overall, users are not registered across mobile backend environments unless they register multiple times. So an obvious question is, why does Mobile Cloud Service do this? Why does it have this restriction? Simply put, if you were working on a development version of a mobile backend and you wanted to test it by testing out a send message like, hi mum, and you send out that push notification, you really wouldn't want to send that message out to all the mobile backend users, including those in production. Boy, that would be embarrassing, wouldn't it? But I bet you've done something similar in the past. The second thing to note is when you use Mobile Cloud Service to push out notifications to multiple users, it doesn't send them all at once. Rather, it does it in batches. And so this implies not all messages will be sent at once in a timely fashion. And this leads on to the, uh, the third and final point. A point we alluded to in an earlier episode is that MCS sends the push notifications through push providers such as APNS or GCM to on forward to the actual devices on your behalf. Now, the push providers have their own service level agreements or SLAs on sending push notifications out. 
and they may or may not deliver the messages immediately and they may or may not deliver the messages at all. Now we'd hope they do, but of course something might go wrong. So you cannot rely on the push notifications being received by your mobile users in a timely manner. And your system should take into account the messages never arriving and giving your users an alternative mechanism of discovering the information or the message that the push notification contained if they are critical to the user. Overall, as a considerable amount of mobile users enable push notifications on their devices and for applications, push notifications are an essential part of most successful mobile applications out there. Just think about it, the mobile apps you use the most are always pushing you notifications because they provide a highly effective mechanism for engaging your mobile users. Don't, so don't shy away from push notifications, use them in your applications, you'll find them very, very useful for keeping your users happy. Thanks for joining us in this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll catch you in the very next episode very soon.